Hello, and welcome to my shop, uh, Arcane Shadows. I am Eric, uh, the owner of Alchemy with Zero Phase YouTube channel. And in this video, I want to demonstrate some of the capabilities of my Ultimate Stable Diffusion Prompt Generator. Uh, I do feel that the name is warranted. I've spent a lot of time uh, researching other people's prompt generators, whether they're spreadsheets, other GPT uh, prompt generators, um, or even the ones they have on Hugging Face and the couple of the new ones they've tried putting into Automatic 11.11 for Stable Diffusion. And all of them, you know, they each have some pluses and minuses. Uh, overall, they're very tedious to use, uh, requiring selecting multiple options and then clicking Submit to get one or two prompts, sometimes five prompts. Like the ones online on Hugging Face will give you like four or five prompts. They're very random. And they don't include any of the specific formatting, leaving that up to you to manually uh, and tediously type in like emphasis formatting and putting in camera information or otherwise that uh, I felt that could be done better. And so I wanted to do this in a way that did not require uh, large data sets of keywords or commonly used things because ChatGPT already has all that built in. And it, it's very aware of all the things that most of these people, most of the people use when creating a good prompt. So I want to demonstrate some of the capabilities of this prompt generator. So this is several pages of sophisticated instruction. I, you can see part of it here, and obviously I'm not going to show the rest of it, but um, this is just the bottom part uh, of approximately, well, I think it's like four pages, four pages, maybe five of uh, very sophisticated logic commands that are designed to get ChatGPT to respond a very specific way. And so this is the problem that a lot of people have with trying to develop a prompt generator for ChatGPT is it's very difficult to develop anything sophisticated because it's like a balancing act. When you're trying to balance one thing and you get one thing to work but suddenly another thing stops working and so it requires rebalancing the whole prompt. Um, I've, I've told people it's like it's like trying to talk to a drunk Vulcan. You know, it's it, sometimes it forgets. You have to reformat certain things. You got to be very specific. It's it's pretty crazy. So let's dive into this. Uh, we're going to throw a prompt in here, um, and this might be something you would actually see just being put into Stable Diffusion. Uh, a dark and mysterious garden with a stone archway, a path through the garden, and a creep, creepy blue light in the distance. But it's missing a lot of stuff. We're just going to throw that in there. And uh, let's regenerate that once. The ID that it puts at the beginning should be random. Uh, yes, that was better. So what we get is a unique ID at the beginning. This is for filing purposes, honestly. I, I find it easier to create folders based on a unique ID at the beginning. Uh, it, it has no effect on the rest of the prompt because it's just not a keyword. It doesn't know what this is, so it doesn't focus on it. Uh, these, this is the quality indicator. It's the default one that goes at the beginning of all prompts. Uh, then it specifies the medium, and then it talks about the primary focus um, with a little bit of detail like under shadow, secondary focus. Um, in this particular one, we specify the third thing, the path, so it's going to uh, uh, detail you know, some of the third focus along with the environment, uh, lighting and atmosphere information, and uh, it's going to emphasize the twisted trees here, which is kind of cool, it did that in misty fog. More because it's down at the end, it's going to emphasize these to make sure they get incorporated. Um, sometimes it adds a little bit of uh, fluffy stuff at the end. I work to try and get rid of that. I am constantly working on this to develop it and make it better, but this is a pretty good prompt. You can copy this, paste it right into Stable Diffusion, and get an amazing picture. So um, that's just a simple way of using this, just saying what you want. Could be short, could be long. Add as much detail or as little detail to it as you want. Uh, we're going to throw another one in here. I always come back and reuse the first prompt. Um, like most AIs, it has a token limit, a memory limit. If you start going further and further down, it may start forgetting some of the instructions. So we're going to paste this new one in here. Two prompts, office group photo. And what it should come up with is two prompts. We didn't specify a lot of stuff, so we're giving the AI a lot of freedom to kind of uh, imagine what it thinks is going to be in there. So uh, it fills in a lot of the information. This one here, it actually did a little bit of higher quality emphasis. Um, unique ID assigned to each prompt. Well, each prompt gets the same unique ID, I should say, for filing purposes. 
And then uh, it uses, oh, this one's a messed up one. It's, it's actually putting the emphasis on the break command. So we're just gonna regenerate that. This is what it should look like here with the break command. It should specify whatever it is. Uh, a lot of times it's color, could be uh, particular features. It specifies photography. Uh, but it puts a break command here which helps isolate things in the uh, uh, image. Um, it's used, it, it, it does really good with color, like getting eye color and that kind of thing. So, and then because it's a photograph, it actually incorporates, it's supposed to incorporate on photos, camera and lens information. This helps really zero in the image and, and, and really uh, develop a better looking image. Things will just look better. So, and as you can see, we got two prompts. So next we move on to, let's do multi-prompt with specifying the number of words. Two prompts, 40 words each, candid photo of a woman sitting under a tree in the park. Yeah, again, labels are a little interesting. That was one of the harder things to get it to work. Get, get to work. Uh, for the most part, it does. Um, I would say probably 90% of the time we get unique labels, so about this here yeah it's better okay <clears throat> so in this one here what we see is um, we, we have a picture that's involving a woman and uh, under a tree in a park and so the AI knows that there's gonna be colors involved with this it obviously says candid photo okay and in this one here it doesn't include the camera information which is fine but it does go in and start emphasizing emerald green leaves warm golden rays flowing chestnut hair starts describing her contemplative expression. So that's going to give us a great image and, and it'll be a close-up image um, and depending on the model you're using it will give a very centered image, uh, very well balanced. This one here, uh, specified candid photo, it knew that it was a photo so it did include camera information on this one and uh, again emphasizes various things. I don't like that it emphasized that. That's one of the things I'm trying to work out is it shouldn't be emphasizing anything that can't really be seen. Maybe it'll be blowing her hair because of that um, but things like auburn locks it'll emphasize verdant green surroundings and azure blue eyes that'll make for a great image so next we're going to go to a more sophisticated one we're going to uh, do again multi-prompt specifying less fewer words abstract stuff oops i misspelled Splash style. There we go. Sometimes you're going to get sequential letters like this. I don't like that. That's something that the GBT has a hard time with generating its own random stuff. Most of the time it works, but in this case, I added a seven at the end, so that's okay. So these are all going to be short. I'm not going to include camera information, even if it is a, a camera, which none of these are, which is fine. Uh, but these are great for if you want to do some brainstorming sessions. Um, just throwing out, like you say, 10 prompts, 20, 30, whatever prompts, go through and find the one you like, pull it out, copy and paste, say, hey, let's do some more prompts on this, um, or just to give you some ideas. So, uh, really good way to brainstorm. Here, let's try this one right here. Again, multi-prompt, multi-word. So we're gonna do four prompts, 40 words each, four intimate portraits of four different women expressing four different emotions detail color. So this is a trigger for it. It will utilize the color emphasis a little more in depth. So serene, tranquility, sapphire blue eyes, flowing ebony hair, delicate ivory features, uh, subtle lavender hues. So uh, this will make for a very um, vivid color uh, image. So it's a portrait. Uh, it's not specifying that it is a photo or anything. So we're just uh, we just basically said intimate portraits. So as you can see, we're emphasizing a lot of color. We're going to get some great images out of that. And again, with uh, um, you can just specify the number of prompts and then a general idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to move into a command that a lot of my users are loving uh, is the auto command. Um, so what this will do is it gives the AI a lot more freedom to pick and choose which functions and which features to incorporate into prompts. It should give you five prompts every time. Sometimes it just gives one. 
So we're going to do auto, beautiful, and different art mediums. So we got digital illustration, oil painting. This one, it actually did include the trending information. So this one, it said trending on ArtStation, <clears throat> trending CD Society, trending DeviantArt. Um, this is a watercolor, charcoal sketch. So great, gave some great responses here, emphasizing uh, various important items in the image, including color. Uh, this one emphasized a golden wheat field, uh, her emerald green dress. Yeah, so these are, these are gonna be amazing prompts too. So yeah, um, the auto command is amazing. It's so fun to use. And you can be, you can actually specify things with that. You don't have to just leave it at auto. You can say, uh, you know, 10 prompts, 20 words each. Usually you put the words, like 20 words each. If it's just one prompt and you just want to specify the words, you just do 20 words. But when you're specifying multiple prompts, usually it's better to put each. Uh, it helps the AI be less confused. Let it go through and do that and gives us some pretty good. And again, we're giving it the ability to uh, choose some of the other functions, even though we specified 10 prompts uh, at 20 words each, it's still taking some freedom to specify and detail out color. It did not do the trending information in this one. Again, the auto is gonna be, it's letting the AI choose on a lot of different levels. If I wanted to, I could come in here and put comma trend. <clears throat> No, it's still choosing itself. So I can try trending, see if that helps. No, AI is still choosing. You see it's actually doing more than 20 words on this. It's saying, nope, I'm going to do what I want. And some of these other ones are less. Anyway, yeah, so the auto command is, is giving the AI a lot of freedom. So there it is. Um, one of the things I didn't touch on is chain prompting. Uh, you know, let's say we do one prompt, 40 words, um, detailed sci-fi city street corner with a man. We get one prompt. It's going to emphasize some of the color, okay, and some of the features. And it says, uh, busy street corner, neon lights, hovering vehicles, or a lone man clad in cyberpunk attire. So let's say we don't want that, that person. Let's, let's uh, um, change, oops, <clears throat> change man to woman and make focus of image. So it's emphasizing some of the attire. It changed it to woman. Um, I, I really want it to be the focus, and I want it to be at the beginning. So describe woman first. So and then what it does is it rearranges the prompt. Confident woman. So it says digital illustration. Confident woman missed the future cityscape. And... Uh, I'm wondering where the other parenthesis is here. It's missing it. Sometimes it'll do that. You just re redo it. There we go. So, yeah, we got a good formatted prompt there. Um, so chain prompting allows you to change stuff on the fly. Uh, give her blue eyes. I could type, right? Confident with striking blue eyes at futuristic city street corner. Okay. Um, maybe we uh, change scene to cyberpunk bar. Cyberpunk ambience, confident, cyberpunk bar ambience, confident woman striking blue eyes, center stage, casting cues around future cocktails. Yeah, so it, it literally intuitively changed the entire prompt so that instead of being on a city street corner, she's now in a bar scene uh, with cocktails and <laughs> other things. So this is so much fun to be able to play with this and do this. And it's a tool unlike all any of the other prompt generators out there. 
Um, I'm hoping that this demonstration gives you at least somewhat of an idea of what you can do with this. And because we're working with ChatGPT, there's probably functions in this I'm not, I've not tried yet. Uh, things you can ask the AI to do with these prompts. So uh, our Discord community is diving into this and finding out what they can do with it. And we're having a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, Again, I, it, for those of you who purchase my prompt generator, I appreciate it. It helps me out a lot and uh, helps to fund kind of the further development of this prompt generator. And I uh, hope to see you on Discord. Talk to you later.